Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Cryptographic Methods Part 2. Today we're going to have a brief discussion on key stretching, and then we're going to conclude with a discussion on some cryptographic implementations. I have a fair amount of technical ground to cover, not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, we're going to begin with a brief discussion on key stretching. The greatest vulnerability in any cryptographic implementation tends to be in the security key that is used in the process. In many cases, the security key is either a password or passphrase that is used in the cryptographic process. Both passwords and passphrases are susceptible to brute force type attacks, leading to a weakness in the cryptography that's used. The solution to this is to use a process called key stretching or key strengthening to harden the keys against brute force type attacks. With key stretching, the password or passphrase is processed by an algorithm to strengthen the password by increasing the complexity of the key. Two popular algorithms used for key stretching are bcrypt and pbkdf2, that's password-based key derivation function 2. Now that we've covered key stretching, let's move on to cryptographic implementations. First up is the one-time pad. It's a symmetrical cryptographic encryption method in which a random security key is used to encrypt a message only one time. It is particularly resistant to hacking as the key will change with every message that is sent. When the random key used is the same length as the message, it is even more difficult to break. Another cryptographic implementation is DES, Data Encryption Standard. It's a symmetrical cryptographic encryption standard developed by the US government. It is a block cipher, so it encrypts complete blocks of data at a time, and it utilizes a 56-bit encryption algorithm. DES is not considered to be secure. Triple DS is an improvement on DES that utilizes three separate 56-bit encryption keys to create a 168-bit encryption method. Each block of data is encrypted three times, once for each of the security keys. Then there is RC, which stands for the Revest Cipher. It's a family of symmetrical cryptographic encryption methods developed by Ronald Rivest. RC4 is a stream cipher, so it encrypts one bit at a time, used by other cryptographic solutions, including SSL, Secure Socket Layer, and WEP, WEP, Wired Equivalent Privacy. It is considered to be a weak encryption standard and should no longer be used. RC5 is a block cipher algorithm that is much more secure than RC4. Then there is Blowfish. It's a symmetrical cryptographic encryption method developed by Bruce Schneier as a replacement for the weaker DES standard. It utilizes a variable encryption bit length and can offer anywhere from single bit encryption to 448 bit encryption. While Blowfish can be effective, it can also be difficult to work with. TwoFish is a symmetrical cryptographic encryption method developed by Bruce Schneier based on his development of Blowfish. TwoFish utilizes 128-bit encryption and is easier to work with than Blowfish. And then there's AES, Advanced Encryption Standard. It's a symmetrical cryptographic encryption method developed on behalf of the National Institute of Standards and Technology, that's NIST, which is an agency of the U.S. government. It is a block cipher encryption method in which the block size is always 128 bits, but the key used for the encryption can be 128 bits, 192 bits, or 256 bits. AES has been adopted worldwide as an acceptable level of encryption and performance. RSA is an asymmetrical cryptographic encryption method that is named after the developers. It is the first widely used encryption standard 
to employ the use of public and private security keys. An entity's public key can be used by anyone to encrypt messages. Only the entity's private key can be used to decrypt messages encrypted by the public key. PGP, also known as Pretty Good Privacy, is an asymmetrical cryptographic encryption method that can be used to generate security keys and to publish the public security keys in a secure manner. It allows for the secure, think encrypted, use of email between two endpoints with minimal effort. GPG, also known as GNU Privacy Guard, is a GNU systems implementation of PGP. GNU is a Unix-like operating system, and Linux is part of the GNU family of operating systems. One issue with asymmetrical encryption is how the exchange of security keys is going to occur in a secure manner. The first practical solution was developed by Whitfield Diffie and Martin Hellman. Their solution was referred to as the Diffie-Hellman, or DH, key exchange. It created a secure method in which two unrelated parties could jointly create a shared secret key over an unsecure communication channel, as in the internet. Diffie-Hellman has since been improved upon with the creation of DHE and ECDHE. DHE stands for Diffie-Hellman Ephemeral Key, and ECDHE stands for Elliptic Curve Diffie-Hellman Ephemeral Key. Both DHE and ECDHE help to provide perfect forward secrecy and help to ensure the security of the key exchange process. That concludes this session on Cryptographic Methods Part 2. I began with a brief discussion on key stretching, and we concluded with a discussion on cryptographic implementations. On behalf of PACE IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.